All right. Um, so we've been working through this example. In fact, we, we, we had some hiccups along the way. We made a mistake. I made a mistake. Uh, arithmetic error. Uh, forgot to multiply by 2. Really embarrassing. Anyway, we sorted it out. We got the right Jacobian. 1 over 5, as it turns out, was the value of the Jacobian. Right? We worked out that my function in terms of x and y could be written as simply u um, when I write it in terms of u and v. And so we put in our function in terms of u and v, we multiply by the Jacobian, and now we have a simple integral over a rectangle, and we're done. Well, we still do the integral, but the integral is easy. I'll leave it for you to take care of. So one of the issues that we came up with, right, and, and where, where things went off the rails a little, is that a lot of the time, and this is, this is the case in the one we're doing right now, um, the transformation that you're dealing with is often going to be suggested by the region you're integrating over. Occasionally, and it might still be the case, right, it might still be the case that the transformation you're dealing with is going to be suggested by the function, just like it is in one variable, right? Um, you recognize that there's some kind of like chain rule thing going on. You're trying to reverse it. You're trying to simplify the function. Yeah, sometimes it happens, but most of the time it's the region. And the trouble is when you look at the region and you start thinking about how to describe the boundary, right? Um, you're describing the boundary by setting, you know, functions of x and y equal to constants, right? And, and so this tells you, usually what this tells you is a way to define u and v in terms of x and y. Well, that doesn't give you the transformation t because t is supposed to go from here to there, right? It's supposed to tell you how to define x and y in terms of u and v. Okay, but remember that these maps that we're working with, we, we insist that they're invertible. One of the reasons we insist they're invertible is, well, you know, or we, we say they're one-to-one. -one. That means they have an inverse, right? And, and it turns out that what we're writing down here is that inverse. So you can go about trying to find it. Uh, in this case, the map is linear. We know how to find inverses for linear maps, so we can, we can do it. It's, it's reasonably straightforward. If, if, but if, the, if these functions are more complicated, right, if these are, if we're in some scenario where these are nonlinear functions of x and y, um, maybe the algebra required to solve for x and y in terms of u and v is beyond what we're capable of doing, or at least beyond what we're interested in doing. How do you save yourself a little bit of trouble? Well, here's a follow-up theorem. And, all right, I'm going to be lazy about stating this theorem. I'm just going to give you the, the formula. Um, this is kind of an inverse function sort of result here, right? Um, it, it's very similar to, and you know, let me even just kind of write this on the side. Let me remind you that in calc 1, in calc 1, there you have this formula for the derivative of an inverse, right? Do you remember this formula? Something that says, you know, f inverse prime at x is like 1 over f prime at f inverse of x, right? There's a formula like that. You see it in calculus one, you use it to get the, the derivatives for the inverse trig functions. You, you come up with this essentially by implicit differentiation. Um, well, you can play the same game over here. Um, there's, uh, the details are in the textbook, but it more or less amounts to the fact that, well, you know, this Jacobian, right, it's the determinant of a linear map. That linear map is the derivative of this transformation t. And, and it turns out that essentially by chain rule that if you, you know, well here's one thing we know. We know that t, t composed with t inverse is, is the identity, right? Let's call that i, identity function, right? So if you take the derivative of both sides, um, well chain rule says the derivative of t, right, and that's a function of u and v, times, this is a matrix of multiplication, remember, the derivative of t inverse, that's a function of x and y. Well, and, and i is, is already a linear, right? The identity function is a linear function. It's, it's the same identity matrix as always. And, and the derivative of a linear function is that same linear function. Aha! 
what do you get if you take the determinant of both sides, right? This now, what this says is that the derivative of the inverse function is the inverse of the derivative, if you like, right? Um, that as a matrix, the derivative of t inverse is just the inverse of the derivative of t. And if we take determinants of everything, well, we know what happens. This is going to be the Jacobian of t. This is going to be the Jacobian of t inverse. And what this tells me is that the Jacobian of t inverse, so let's do it this way. The Jacobian of t as a function of u and v is 1 over the Jacobian of t inverse as a function of x and y, right? Because th these are determinants, right? The determinant of, of the inverse is 1 over the original determinant. Um, and, you know, if necessary, we might say, well, you know, remember that, remember that x and y here are really t of u, v. Right? So we can do it like that. And you can just as well put t inverse here. Jacobian of t inverse is a function of x and y would be 1 over Jacobian of t. Um, Right? It's the same kind of relationship. So how does that help you here? Well, what it means, it means you can completely skip the job of trying to solve for x and y as functions of u and v. Let's just stick with u and v as functions of x and y, and let's say, hey, we have this. So let's calculate the derivative. The derivative of t inverse is going to be so we do the x derivatives first, 1, 3, then we do the y derivatives, minus 2, minus 1, okay? So the Jacobian, well, it's the determinant. Minus 1, minus, minus 6, minus 1 plus 6, 5. And that means that the Jacobian that we want is 1 over the Jacobian we just found, 1 over 5. So as long as you're, in, you know, you're lucky that you realize, hey, x minus 2y, that's just you, you can, you can plug that in right away. Right? It's, it's a hell of a lot easier to do this, flip it over, than it is to solve, first solve for x and, or solve for x and y in terms of u and v, then take the derivative, then take the, the, the determinant, um, Work with the inverse instead. It's simpler, right? It saves you some time. Uh, we'll do one more example. We'll illustrate this again. We'll do another example um, that's, uh, we'll do a nonlinear example, I think, and then we'll, um, we'll move on to something else.